It's an exciting Monday afternoon. We are here once again to take a look at issues as it affects you and I in this great continent, Africa, in the program African Discuss. I am Wilson of Marshall. Today is all about what is happening in Egypt. Yes, Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. At first, it started with the Arab Spring, where Hosni Mubarak was told to leave. It took massive protests. Many persons lost their lives until Hosni Mubarak was eased off. Morsi came into a scene, giving Egyptians promises, uh, saying it's going to be an El Dorado enough of uh, sitatism right now, in quote, it's going to be democracy all through. All of a sudden, started demanding for the ultimate power, a yeah, college supreme power, and that didn't go down too well with the Egyptians. They came out yet again en masse to say, Mosi, you have to go. And mind you, Mosi was democratically elected. But this is the fact that he's trying to assume more powers to his office, to himself. There was a revolt against him and the Islamic Brotherhood. Morsi was shown the exit and he landed in jail with his brotherhood proscribed as a terrorist group. Al Sisi came into the scene as a military personnel to bring peace, soccer in Egypt. All of a sudden, Egyptian says, look, we want a democratically elected president. And of course, immediately he resigned and put himself up for election. After the election, this man came out very, very strong. He became the president of Egypt. And he made so many promises, too many of them, too good to believe. And the Egyptians would applaud. They clapped, they jeered, they were happy about it. But the big question now is, is the story the same today? Don't forget also about some journalists that we are in prison. Don't forget also about the reports we are getting from Egyptians saying that the press has been suppressed. Don't forget also about the report that autocracy, so to speak, seems to be the order of the day and Egyptians were better off, according to some, in the time of mercy. And it cascaded into massive protests. The big question now is, is it going to spread? They call it rare protest, but... You get to see the numbers of persons coming out to say, Al Sisi, you're no longer the Messiah, you must leave. After giving this man a mandate to run till 2030. Anyway, my analyst will be able to lead through more light on this. With me in the studio, I have a political analyst, a clergyman, and of course, an activist. Join me to welcome Reverend Humphrey Arrega. Well, Reverend, welcome to the show, sir. A pleasure. I appreciate yeah, your yeah, coming. Yeah, All right, sir. Thank you. We're still expecting the likes of uh, God sent everyone saying when he comes in, he's going to join us in the studio to really give more bite to this discourse. Reverend, is like. Egypt is at it again, and leaders upon leaders since the era of the Mubarak after the Arab Spring, they've not lived up to expectations. How do you feel about this recent protest? Well, I have come to again appreciate the fact that the African setting is basically based on deception without a foundation. And Governance without morality will definitely not give you what you are looking for. And then the problem with the African situation is that most of the people that go to the streets to revolt against what they believe is a form of injustice or something never have take pains to articulate what they want. Every nation is ruled by a constitution. The Egyptian constitution is basically more of a military rule than civilian rule. So there are two contestations. One is the military perspective. The other is the religious perspective. Those two do not agree with democracy. And when you don't have, when you have that foundation and that will not be shaken off, and you're trying to lay a new, found, a new building on top, it's always not going to last. So. We, we, the Egyptians are not facing what the reality ought to be. It is easy to protest, but what are you protesting about? 
most of the time, people who seek to articulate thoughts from the academic perspective do not have the basic political uh, underlay. And we have always seen that each time there is a protest, whether it's in Africa or it's in across the world, those who do not understand the meaning of the protests are those who become violent. In, they seize opportunities to gain what they think they have lost in, good, in governance, to have access to the things that they don't have. So it is not really about the issues that they tend to converse. Those who converse those votes, who convert those thoughts, do not have the majority of the opinion of thoughts of people to be able to push it through. They said oh, Mubarak was, was because of corruption and other things. They came. The next person was Mosi. It was a fundamental, it was a, a, a religious fundamentalist issue. There was a person. See, each time you want to use oppression of a people to assert the credibility of your cause by reason of where you are coming from, you are going to have a problem. Mercy had that problem. ICC came in. Oh, so you cannot rule us in this manner. We are not uh, religious fanatics. We have some liberal environment in our religious environment and politics. Let's uh, so because people didn't like the religious aspect of mercy, they revolted. Now ICC came. And he came with a with a, a, a political uh, a military background that has had the power to strangulate every other opposition. Of course, he did, not, he did not lay out, and that's what we keep saying. No African leaders or will-be leaders lay out appropriate uh, thoughts and procedures on which those thoughts will, will, will function. But people just, out of sentiments, out of greed, out of anger, they try to make things work. And it doesn't work like that. Everything that works at last takes a foundation and a process. And people must get to understand what it is. And you're talking about uh, democracy. Democracy is on three tripods. The political, the uh, judicial, and then the, uh, what might call the fourth estate of the realm, if you have uh, journalistic thoughts, able to express themselves. Yeah. But each leader that is despotic, each leader that does not have a thing, wants to suppress. They will suppress the, the political, which is the legislative arm. They suppress the, the press so that people can air their opinion, people cannot even receive information, and then you subjugate the judiciary to your own And that's what uh, LCC did. He made sure that every apparatus, and he began to wield power gradually, gradually. And today he's becoming like an emperor. Hmm. And I believe that the Egyptians should sit back and ask themselves questions. We have had two revolts. This is the third one. What have we done that has not gotten it right? Oh, How right. do we do it? If that is not done, they're still going to go back to the same position and it may even be worse. All right, I, I'll come back to you, Reverend, and just join us right now in the studio is uh, God Saint Hermose, political analyst and activist. Uh, welcome, God Saint. I appreciate your coming. Good afternoon. Uh, all right, now you, you, you just bumped into Reverend giving you a tactical analysis of what is really happening in Egypt, talking about the the, the, the protest that uh, saw Mubarak leaving the scene and of course Mosi also and right now El Sisi have been asked to leave the scene. Is protest peculiar to Egyptians? I mean, because you come in one too many. People be like, first one, second one, you don't like this, you don't like this, and now you don't like this one. What in the world is happening? <laughs> uh, let me begin by saying that um, the Egyptian case is quite a complicated one. Uh, when I say complicated, I mean a lot of issues have happened over the years, especially from the time of the Arab Spring. Yeah. You notice uh, that was when they first of all had to take on Mubarak to Mosi, and now the other guy. You know, why we must um, talk to protesters to be very clear and definite mm. about their demands. You know, that's the reason why we like to talk about revolution that has specific directions. You know, why we also know that we must establish the fact that we have this problem in Africa. Corruption is already a known problem. We all know that we are currently battling with corruption. But another thing that I think is currently happening, you must realize that uh, Egypt is a fundamentally religious nation. In fact, you needed to see the battle that happened between uh, Mubarak time and Moses, oh, there was a lot of insurgency, different group coming up. There was a lot of bomb blasts everywhere, you know, and 
it came to a point where the society became volatile, it became aggressive. There's this tendency to react at every slight mistakes of governance, you know. So protesters must be very specific about what their demands are. But beside that, there's something wrong about African leadership, which we have come to see over the years. And beside the fact that this is peculiar to the uh, Egyptian government, I see it as something that is cutting across Africa. There's this tendency of governance to want to crush, use the crushing approach, you know, and which is quite undemocratic. You know, it, it's, it's something today, if we are fair enough to look at it critically, you notice it's currently going on across board in Africa. Somebody comes to power and sad to say, even in a democratic setting, every opposition is seen as an enemy, as someone to be crushed. Where is the place of constructive criticism? You and I are aware that democracy will even try better when you give people a chance to express themselves. All the time, people don't have to share your views. And sometimes those views that may not be exactly your views or your take, you know, may be something that may help you to see from another side of the coin. You know, th th and that is what I think is the mistake that the Fatah um, LCC government is making. You know, you know, he had a military background. And even the election that brought him into power last year was, was not really, did not really go down with the average Egyptians. You know, a lot of them felt it wasn't a credible election. But again, it, remember even the death of Mosi rose, arose a lot of eyebrow, even in the international community. There were a lot of questions about surrounding what led to the death of Mosi and the rushing of his barrier. You know, the government had to rush this barrier. And currently, the international community have also said that this present government does not allow freedom of expression and it has a tendency of crush down anybody that opposes. Report has it that over 200 civilians have been arrested, and which is sad, you know. We must be able to realize that governance is a two-way thing. Why the people govern has the responsibility to first provide self-governance. Those that are in power should realize that they occupy a position after God that is so sensitive to policy making and formation. But I think the problem of the African leaders over the years is this greed that want to hold on to power. An African man gets into power and he wants to remain there for life. You know, recently, you know, uh, there was also a, a certain parliamentarian law that could give um, Sisi the power to remain, the, the, the right to remain in power it's to about 2030. Yeah. You know, so a lot of factors are triggering up this reaction. And one of the things that is so peculiar about this protest, Egypt has been known for protests since 2010, I mean, from the Arab time. But yeah. analysis shows that you will need to see the average age bracket of the people that are calling out and asking for this government to step down. You know, I want our leaders to realize that the people are becoming more civilized. I want our leaders to know that the people are becoming more aware of what a democratic society must look like. Okay. But on the part of the people, I agree that we must be patient with governance. But the truth is, what is currently going on in, e in Egypt was triggered up by a tendency to crush every opposition. Okay. And a lot of opposition parties are taking advantage of that. All right. Now, he used the word crush every opposition. Some use the word muzzle. Some may use the word uh, uh, to stampede on the rights of these persons. Is that what is really going on in Egypt? Or can one envisage that this protest has been triggered by the so-called labeled Islamic sect or terrorist organization in Egypt? No one factor there uh, is a problem. There are multiple, there are multifaceted problems. There is the fundamentalist on one side, which believe, who believes that Egypt must be ruled by strictly by, by Islamic law, and those have gone to the extreme. But we also have those, like I said, who have the military background that believes in, a, in an autocratic rule. They give command and you obey. You, you don't have to question. Then, of course, you have the young liberals who believe that uh, we want what will happen in America to happen in Egypt. 
where you can say anything and nobody is, uh, is bothered about it, you get what you want. But they also have the conservative themselves who believe that status quo must be maintained. You know, an ability to be able to synchronize these thoughts brings in a perfect thing. I keep saying that, like I said earlier, the basis of rulership is the constitution. And if the constitution has a fundamental flaw and it's not corrected, there's nothing you can put on top. Because if you look at the electoral system of Egypt, it becomes difficult for any meaningful person who do not have those conservative or ultra views to win an election. So you have to ask yourself, how do we do that? You need to start from the basis. See, most of the time, protests want to start from the top. You know, you want to, let's talk about the president. The president is not the only person in governance in the country. There are layers. How have the people been able to ask and make sure that the country allows the judiciary to be independent? Because once you don't have an independent judiciary to adjudicate on issues, that's the end of the story for you. And two, Africans believe that they must control everything that has to do with power and governance. In democracy, like we have seen in Western countries like America, so the president does not control the, the military or the police. Assistance. They don't control the power of the pulse, the money. In Africa, the president is, is the general overseer. <laughs> <laughs> he's the one who has yes. He's the general overseer. <laughs> he, he dispenses resources at his own pleasure. <laughs> he uses the, the, the security apparatus at his own pleasure. And we, look at how, you see, I keep wondering, look at how police and military beat up civilians for protesting. And these are supposed to be the ones to protect the civilians to enable them to do what needs to be done, to hold government accountable. And the, 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 that's because the military and the, 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 the security apparatus are becoming an appendage of the of becoming uh, personal uh, aids to the president. You know, and that's, that's where it is. Absolute, it's a power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts, absolutely. You know, and that's where the Africans and the other countries that are not embraced the system of democratic rule comes into play in this matter. So I believe that a lot of us are, how do we learn? Democracy has not taken its root in African nations. I, I said it somewhere before, I keep saying, the African, for a large extent, came out from uh, uh, this um, traditional system of kings and rulers being overlords. You know, and that's where they still have that understanding. So when the man comes, he wants to uh, appropriate everything to himself. In the olden days, the the the, the, the others, the, the chiefs, they have the power of judiciary, executive, and others, and they can they hold the power of life and death, and that's what the president of Africa still takes about. So they don't think about. It's unfortunate that even though they have studied the countries where democracy flourishes, where they were able to make their life, they once they step into the African soil, everything they learn outside of this country evaporates, and they go back to the mundane issues and lifestyle that cripples every group. So that's why we need to begin to uh, let there be this decisive. Look at what's happening in Sudan. You know, like if, if people rose up and they drop the military have taken over. To give power to the civilian is not a problem. And you come at the end of the day, they have the same thing that uh, Abashar uh, uh, did while killing the protesters. The military has done it. And you cannot hold them accountable. They are giving immunity to themselves. So this, this is what most has, that's what SEC has done. They, uh, they said there was a killing in the protest of uh, Mubarak and uh, uh, the man. Yeah, most and, most, and, they were and yet there are killings yes. in, in, in his own protest. So here's some of the things. We do not have that understanding. Unfortunately, people don't also hold on too long. When civilians see, they don't look like I said, look at one target. Oh, that's the person. When you leave, everybody say, who do we? Let's go home. Nothing has happened. Fundamental issues must be done. Fundamental issues must be done, must be tackled. That's not like saying that something is fundamentally, because we're fundamental right now, wrong with the Egyptians. Because three leaders, you don't like them. And now, uh, Sisi hasn't been there for, let's, he hasn't been completely tenor. And here we are, troubling, bedeviling Egypt, politics being heated up from each segment and from what he said he's trying to quash insurgents trying to quash 
terrorists. Don't you think he is hitting them the way they don't want? Because of the allegation of the against him, we talked about corruption. Can you really make sense out of what they are saying? Uh, one of the things they are fronting is really the corruption issue. Mm. But I want to say that leadership is give and take. You know, sometimes we need to come to uh, appreciate the beauty of compromise mm. in managing conflict in leadership. I, I think what is going on in Egypt is more of a leadership problem. Leadership is so powerful that when a leader sometimes decides to compromise, it can win in this case. Why we agree that a government policy must not necessarily be popular all the time, but it must not be seen to become treacherous or to become oppressive. You know, now, take a look at the old stuff. Egypt had a ruler for about three decades. That's Mubarak. Yeah. Before the Arab Spring that gave birth both in Egypt and across other Arab nations, there was this massive re revolt against leadership. Then it got to Mosi, which was seen as the hope, you know, before the military came in under El Sisi, who is now an elected uh, president or so. Now, three things have gone wrong fundamentally from my observation. Number one, African leadership are greedy. There's so much greed that when an African man gets to power, he's not about the job to be done. It's about how do I spend my entire lifetime here? And look at what happened in the case of Nigeria and several other nations. You know, look at the young man we just lost the other day. Okay, quite elderly. Um, this Zimbabwe president that nah, just Robert died. Mugabe. Uh, Robert Mugabe. He's an elder. <laughs> so, yeah, he's an elder, sorry, so to speak. You know, and a couple of other nations. Yeah. The moment Africans get into power, it is seen as a birthright. That is what we call the slave mentality. Mm. A slave always wants to hold on to every little opportunity because he thinks that, hey, this is where my life ends. This is where it begins. This is where it ends. After now, I will not get the opportunity again. We believe that to us, leadership is all that matters. And for us, leadership is a position. You see, that's the reason why I said, I, I want to borrow from the word of John. See, Master, he said everything rises and falls on leadership. Mm -hmm. Leadership is about the ability to manage the differences in people. That's the reason why we say the world has gone beyond IQ to EQ. You know, the world now plays at emotional intelligence. Even the so-called extreme Muslims or they about, there's a way they can be appealed to. And like my mentor have said here, mm -hmm. you know, the Constitution is the fundamental Bible that governs every nation. Mm. But when the government come in, and the first thing he wants to do is to see how to subvert or change the constitution for his own good, mm. now he has already breed suspicion. Now the people start losing confidence in him. Now you could recall that the moment mercy was, you know, government was toppled by the military, there was no really much cry. You know, the people felt like, okay, maybe this man was going to stabilize the system. That was even the take of the international community. The UN secretary then said that the military was going to bring democracy. <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that was the take. It was assumed that, okay, probably it was coming because the reason why the Egyptians felt disappointed is because if you look at the details of the issues that brought in Mosi, Mosi was seen as the hope, as the future, until it was perceived to be an authoritarian leader. A dictator you know that was the fundamental problem so I think in Africa we begin to we need to begin to look at building leadership institutes you know this is where I want to go a little bit into educational life our children from primary schools don't take leadership course people from secondary school don't take leadership course recently one of my mentors met with the governor and he said to him can I tell you the truth being a governor in Nigeria is like you being asked to fly a plane without going to a pilot school you know, and you can see how it is. Nations are not run by guesswork or by expectancy on the miraculous. It's by institutions. Mm. Institutions must be built and respected. But when you have the, the leader of the ring that always want to corner the constitution, influence the parliament. So African leadership bothered themselves more about subverting the constitution, influencing the constitution to, to you know, benefit their own selfish interests than the job. All right. You know, because if LCC has focused on the job, now, Egyptians have had two revolts. 
Now, as an intelligent leader is, um, coming from a military background, he's supposed to look at the check and balances that has to be done. And there were places where he had to have compromised, especially in terms of policies. You know, and now look at the brutality against the civilian. The, the international view of this government in Egypt is already so bad. That currently it is nicknamed as a government that have no right for that have no respect for the well, fundamental the human rights. rights of the citizen. Okay. We'll that come is, back. Is that, is that, is that a okay. leadership problem? All right, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to, to you because we want to go for a, a break. But I, I need you to really ponder on this. Is it a case of the constitution or the background? Because these leaders we've been talking about, they were backed by the constitution. After all, for random, was like, you know, uh, um, the people came out to vote and 80% gave LCC the right, the power to even contest, to remain in power T2030. It was made open to them. We'll be right back after this break. Thank you so much for staying tuned. If you're just joining us, this is Africa Discuss. Mind if you miss the first part of the discuss, you can go to our YouTube channel at um, uh, youtube.itv uh, radio ng. Yes, you just get to see there www.youtube forward slash itv radio Nigeria. Just click on it and you get to see everything that you really missed out on any of our current affairs program. I mean, any. Just log on to our YouTube channel, get to see, get to watch, you get to comment, you get to like, you know, just do that. And of course, uh, if you really want to take a look at us live on the internet, maybe pass out, power cut, log on to www.itvradionigeria forward slash live. You get to see what we're doing live online. If you're a good TV subscriber, just tune in to channel 107 for Star Times, channel 130. Yeah, and you can also interact with us with our Twitter handle at ITV Radio NG or on my own personal Twitter handle at Marshall Wilson. We'll get interacting on this platform talking about Africa in general, the program Africa Discuss. Today is all about the protest in Egypt and the impact is going to have in LCC's government. Reverend, we're taking a look at the constitution. This man came into the scene, it made it open to the Egyptians. Do you want me to have the part to be re-elected or to remain in 2020? Everybody came out to vote, they said yes. That was a few months ago. And now, this protest. What do you think is something fishy about all this setting? Well, you know, in every... I'm talking about over 80% said yes. See, the and now, now, yeah, it and now we election. have protests. <laughs> See, sometimes, <laughs> so in most of the issues that leaders put forward, mm. there's no clarity. Mm. Yeah, the, the choice is not made based on sound judgments. Mm. It's yeah. like Brexit in Britain. They came with a rosy picture. Oh, if we leave the uh, uh, European Union, we'll be lost of everything. Today, there's, they cannot understand. People are saying, uh, asking questions, what is this Brexit? Mm -hmm. It's becoming a bone in their neck because they don't understand it. People are revolting. See, that's some of the thing. When you come to uh, um, uh, Africa that is even more, uh, less, less educated right. on issues, that you see what the issue is. A man came out, when you say 80%, 80% of what? <laughs> because you see when you talk of election, it's like mm -hmm. how many citizens are in Nigeria electable uh, uh, age? Mm -hmm. We're well, about seven, ninety something mm -hmm. million. How many people voted? Less than uh, thirty million. Yes. So it's a, it's a minority of the majority that votes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you come to say eighty percent, eighty percent of what population? <laughs> you know, I think some of the things. And when you also know that the electoral commission in every African nation is be tailored by the executive, by the president, you understand how, how things are going to work. So they, they, they try to do the things they want to do. They make people who want to vote, to vote for him. And those who are not are suppressed. Like I said, the, when you don't have a free press to analyze the issues involved and give people information that is needed, you blindly go and do something. He knew that he needed something to get to where he's going to. And he wanted to use the constitution to cover. Yeah. You know the constitution? Why would they allow them to be tested in the court, that, that uh, uh, election that was held? It cannot, because they have already also muzzled the judiciary. Those judges who were not in favor have been retired. You bring in judges who will tell you yes. And this is the, what the African, people, the African leaders do. 
you got to the legislator, they look at persons, okay, this one, they make sure that everything the executive says is yes. Because if not yes, it either you don't live to see the next day, mm -hmm. or you are removed from the from the next day, and they use different methods to do that. So people are coerced, people are harassed, people are subjugated into controlling to what the leadership wants. And that's not what the people want. It is now the young people at the bottom who, to them, at the point, they say, I have nothing to lose. Nothing to lose for now. The only thing I, I'm seeing the future that I'm supposed to be seeing that I can't see. Mm -hmm. So let me go and, 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 and do scatter everything. Mm -hmm. Look at what has been happening in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. You can see some measure of civility because the constitution says you cannot do this against protesters. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to give them coverage yeah, as course. police to make them do it non violently. Yeah. And that's another thing. But today in Africa, mm -hmm. the military and the police makes it violent mm -hmm. so that they can have the, the opportunity to deal with the civilians. Yeah. And then you lock them up. Some of them, they, they will never come out to court to be, to be charged for anything. They waste their lives. And then nobody wants to waste his life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will, please don't go there. So people just give in out of frustration because they're not seeing what the future holds. That's why education is at the zero level. Because an educated mind is able to stand his ground. Yeah. He's able to tell you to your face, this is what it is. Explain. But today, the leader do not want the people educated and understand what things are. How many, if you go to Nigeria, for instance, how many people have seen the Nigerian constitution? How many people understand what the Nigerian constitution says? We'll be talking about election issues now. Every day you are seeing new, new thoughts, new laws. You see? And you know what was not it? Okay, you heard somebody said you don't need a certificate. You yeah. just need to express. Yeah, yeah, just go on. <laughs> why will why will mercy? <laughs> <laughs> and they say, say we never do that law. We never do that. That's how so the law is. I can't do that. I cannot swear that I will be that. I will still have that. And it just be, that's the point. I don't need to present it. I just say I say some of the things. So these leaders make sure that everything they do, they do it to their own advantage. To the disadvantage of what is what do the people want? Good atmosphere. Mm -hmm. They're not asking you to build them the house. Mm -hmm. Give them opportunity to live. Mm -hmm. Give them the I freedom to be able to express mm -hmm. themselves. Okay. Let them feel like citizens of the world. Let them have that dignity of humanity. Okay. So you now. say no, the person must be your slave, must be anything. And you use opportunity. You say you are crushing a, a, a fundamentalist. Okay. Are newspaper editors fundamentalists? Don't get to that. Don't get to that. Now you just hold on, Reverend. Don't get to that. Now, let me come to you. Now, let's take right. it up from where um, Reverend left. Yeah. Uh, it, now he talked about uh, CC saying it's crushing fundamentalists. Remember that when CC came into power, Egypt was in tumor. You get to see reactions and counter reactions. You get to see the Islamic Brotherhood saying, yeah, "No yeah, way that Mosi yeah. is the democratically elected they care, president, yeah. and they are not going to back down." Even after that, we have pockets of them also reacting, bomb blasts here and there. Let me take Mosi in a way. I beg your pardon, El Sisi in a way, in his right to bring peace and stability. Not minding the method he chose to make it come into fusion. Uh, don't forget, a uh, method is a double-edged sword. Mm. Uh, the kind of method you use will also determine the reaction you get back. Okay, for me, I think to a large extent, the kind of reaction that LCC is getting is the kind of method he has chosen to engage in administrating the affairs of Egypt. Let me quickly say that in Africa today, what we need is a total overhauling of leadership. We need to go back and learn what it means to govern nations, what it means to administrate. You know, like we were trying to do a comparison. Have you noticed that this protest that is going on in Africa is also going on in some of the Europe countries? Like Reverend just made mention of Hong Kong. Look at what has happened in America. Donald Trump is seen as a very controversial figure. He has made statements that to some people are unacceptable. And at the time, there were millions of women on the street against him in different cities in America. 
there were even when the immigration thing came, the migration, immigration stuff, the issue of gay, the issue of uh, women, you know, there were different abortion and all of that. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of people on the streets and saying, Donald Trump, you are not rec I don't recognize you as president and all of that. But what is the difference between this civilized nation and Africa? They have had the same experience of protesters. African have also had theirs mismanagement. Why do whites believe that my life, the, being a president is not the summation of my life? I'm not thinking of whether I will need a re-election. You know, that is not an African man, because Donald Trump should have been thinking about the next election and try to pay, play cool so that he can ha secure another 40 years. But that wasn't the idea. The idea is, I'm a Republican. We have a belief. I stand for something. You know, these are what we believed in, and these are the things I want to enforce. You see, it boils down to the basics, like what Reverend was saying. You know, how fundamentally we have this attitude that mismanage situation, get it blown up, and find a way to rope people and do the blame game. After we have messed up the system, we look for who to blame. And that is exactly the problem about Africa. You know, we come out and say, hey, there are laws against protest. All over the world, like we have said on this platform before, protest is a constitutional thing. There is no constitution that is, I mean, in a democratic setting, that rule against peaceful protest. But how do our leaders manage it? For leadership in Africa, any act of protest means that you want to destroy me and it's unacceptable. Mm. But in the civilized world, protests are seen to be healthy. It gives the government the opportunity to look again and revisit the issues and give room for compromise. You see, I, I think it's about time we begin to address issues from the fundamentals. Our leadership are in Africa has to begin to establish institutions and respect institutions that they have come to meet, not personally trying to run a reward system kind of government that want to reward those that brings you into power or your party. Because what we have today is a party game in Africa. It's just like recently I was doing an analysis somewhere. You have charged a young man for treasonable felony that have not even committed the act. Although some have said he has done this, he has said that. But for another group that have committed the act and wasted lives, you are even pledging to give them money and settle them. Then tomorrow when the people come out, because for me, I think the average citizen in Africa have been pushed to the wall. And I think I always like to give it to Nigeria. We are so quiet and accommodating. We can't do anything. Because it doesn't make sense. The way we are governed across board doesn't really make sense. And at the end of the day, when there is a reaction, you say, look at them. They are impatient. They are reacting. But look at the history of Hell CC. You know, like Reverend rightly said, you are currently imprisoning journalists. Even one of the journalists from uh, was it Al Jazeera, Al -Jazeera, one of the stations yeah. that was covering the event, you know, was crying that currently they are coming for him. They are coming to pick him up. So there is no even freedom for the press. Then the people take the street tomorrow and you say, ah, you are impatient. You should sit down and wait for us. Wait for you when, they, when you have already seen. When people suspect the system, they react. That's the reason why I'm saying that. It is easy to check the break of law and order. Just make sure you hold on to what the Bible has preached about justice system. Mm -hmm. Be fair in justice. Mm -hmm. Because the moment the social justice system is compromised, mm -hmm. people will do otherwise. When people know that I can do what I want, as long as I have a superpower godfather in position, they will get away with it. Where is the cry and the wars and the warning and all the threats from the military against those that perpetuated anti-electoral uh, issues during the last election? Today, they have been covered. You see? So we are the architect of our own trouble in Africa. Until we begin to go back to the basis, overhaul our leadership, by making sure we have leadership training school right from our primary school days. Mm -hmm. We need to begin to bring in the Constitution, let our children start learning the Constitution, even from primary school. We need to go back and begin to tell our leaders on the sanity of respecting institutions, laws. Leaders in Africa have to realize that the laws are not made for the subordinates. They are also made for them. Because in Africa, we have this erroneous, erroneous mentality that it is the people you govern that should obey the law, not you. You know, so that's the reason why when an African man comes to position, he goes for the constitution first. To try to tweet it or to subvert it in a way that he favors his ambition.
It's about personal greed and personal ambition. That is what Egypt is still suffering from today. I'm only seeing an innocent civilian that are saying no. I know the Muslim Brotherhood may be a little bit biased because Mosi was their candidate. But if you look at the whole issue holistically, LCC have not also fared well as a leader. He has not managed the different emotions and the conflict that he meant on ground. Rather, he has taken decisions that have escalated it. And that's exactly what we are saying. All right. Now, having said that, Reverend, let me come to you. Is this the beginning of the end of LCC's government? Because in time of Mosi, when this thing happened, Mosi was shown the exit. Well, uh, it, it could be the beginning of the end. It depends on how the people play the game. But it could also be a, a storm in the teacup because, like I said, Mercy has, to a large extent, haven't also studied. You see, it's not because he doesn't know what the situation is. He has studied what has happened to Mubarak. He has studied what has happened to Mercy. He, he, that's why he went for the Constitution and tried to go to the people. To say, give them the station. <laughs> Isn't that some of the things? So, so, so that, that was a smart move on his yeah, part. Yeah, so it was a smart move on his part. He, told, he tells you that he's a smart, little intelligent man. You know, even though he's not, he's not a, a cultured uh, yeah, civilian. civilian. Yeah. You know, but he has a military strategy in his mind. Like yeah. every, every military man strategizes ahead. And sometimes he uses the common flag. Yeah. You know, to deceive the enemy. And yeah. they just think as if it's the same thing. That's what, that's what he has done. And the people has, the, the, the word has said, okay, you are, you are there. You can no longer remove him for now. Two, if you go to the court, you can't win him. In Africa, you can't win government. <laughs> for you to win government, they either extend it for a lifetime or the judges are removed. You know? And the legislators cannot even say, okay, let's see, let's see what your powers are. Because they have been compromised, their powers have been removed. Today, you see, that, that's the problem. So we, until, until there's a fundamental shift in the minds and in the institutional structures, that's why every mil every African leader tried to demobilize institutions so as to be able to get yeah. them to do his will. Yeah. And once you don't have strong institutions to manage you, yeah. like you have in the Western countries, yeah. there are a lot of things that uh, American president want to do by him. But the, the, the institution will say, no, you can't do this. Yeah. The, 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 the legislature will say, no, you can't do this. Yeah, yeah. And that's the end of Even though he wants to do it, he backs back because he can't do it. But in Africa, you don't have that. You know, they go wherever they want to go to. In, if there is a roadblock, they demolish it. Mm. That is the military mentality that is being forced on them. And that's why we do not understand what democracy is as Africans. Mm -hmm. And you cannot effectively do. He said, what you don't know, abuse is inevitable. Yeah. And that's why African leaders abuse power. You are supposed to be a servant of the people, not a lord of the people. But the African leaders are lords. And they're not servants. Leadership is for service, not for personal aggrandizement. So we, we talk things upside down in Africa, and that's where things are. And until we go back to understand, because when you do something, we go to learn it in knowledge. It's not your own. Learn it properly. It's like we say in Nigeria. Nigeria borrowed the constitution. The constitution of Nigeria does not represent African, an American constitution. But we say we are, we are doing American. It does not resemble it because we didn't copy it well. Even the little we copy, we didn't study the people who has it to understand what they are doing. You just copy to satisfy your, your, your... So that's one of the things. There is that conflict of thought and conflict of interest yeah. that needs to be reconciled. Mm. And then the people can have their own understanding of what the thing is. Mm. A people must rise to say this is what it is. Unfortunately, there's a struggle between the young and the old. <laughs> Again, I bring in Britain. The, the problem with Brexit today is that the young and the old have two different versions yeah. of what they want to talk about. Yeah. Security, the old people want security. They don't want anything to trouble them. We've been here. Let's go. <laughs> the young people say, no, let's do Let's <laughs> scatter this thing and resemble yeah, yeah, really. you know, It's like a young man to take a computer and scatter it. He has said, please, put it down. Don't spell it to. The man says, I want to reorient. I want to. You see, that's some of the things. He's learning things that you are not learning. You know? And if we don't follow him, you are going to have this problem. That's what we're having. So Africans have a fundamental problem of not trying to understand the, the nature of people. Where there's a change that leadership must understand. And you must have to respect that change for there to be uh, order and, and, and good, good things for the people. If people have peace, they keep saying that. If anybody has peace, I'm able to go to where I'm going to. There's light, there's road. Nobody's going to trouble you. But when you now say me, I cannot even see the light. 
and you expect him to change darkness and not the vote. It's for the light. It's only for a while. <laughs> All right, now for what Reverend said, he said it depends on the way El Sisi choose to handle this. This may be the beginning of the end of his government, or it's going to be a storm in the teacup. In what ways do you think El Sisi should really handle the situation so that everything will be brought back to normal? People are like saying that this may spread all across Egypt. Depends on the way it's been handled. For me, yeah. one of the sanity of leadership is to know when to step out. Because I, I know there are all kinds of African adage that say you don't run, you face it, and you do this. But I love what um, the Prime Minister of uh, Britain did um, before uh, Theresa, Theresa took over. Mm. You know, he said, this, this wasn't my vision yeah. for Britain. This wasn't what I thought. So if the British people think, oh, they needed, uh, they wanted out, this was not what I envisaged. I can't pilot this boat any longer. That is the nobility of leadership. Mm. You know, but we lack that in Africa. An African leader wants to even die there and wake up again and continue <laughs> the leadership. <laughs> he doesn't mind to be in a life machine as long as he's called the president. president. And there are all kind of insane and mentally deranged psychophants that surround them, that even help them, even when they know that a man is not fit for this job. And they say, remain there, whether they like it or not, as long as I benefit. So I think um, LCC should begin to look at the situation at stake. Uh, for me, is either is ready to compromise or is ready to just say, I, I don't think I can continue. Mm -hmm. Since I can't fix it, maybe I should hand over to someone that have a civilian blood that can fix it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And I think it's noble. You know, mm -hmm. We have to begin to look at that. But again, for the Egyptians too, they should be able to articulate their issues clearly. Mm -hmm. All right? Corruption is everywhere. There's hardly a government that will be free from corruption, sure. although we are not, in, in a sense, supporting corruption. Mm -hmm. But they should be able to articulate what they want and go for what they want. They should remove religious extremism. The Muslim Brotherhood must not be tailored towards this country must be governed by Sharia law. It mm -hmm. must be about Muslim law. We must come to a point where we know that this is a nation, not a religious group. And when you become a president, you are the president for all not for a session of people. Mm. And right. this is important. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so, so much, gentlemen. Reverend, should uh, <laughs> Sisi resign, yes or no? A brief answer, please. I'll tell you that. <laughs> to me, I don't think resignation is the issue. Yeah. But yeah. you don't know whether the next person will come. We, we we will on him. <laughs> but I think it's for him to understand mm. that re uh, politics is a game of diplomacy. Yeah. Understanding and giving and taking. It's not about you, it's about the nation. All yeah. right. Thank you so, so much, sir. And of course, uh, thank you so, so much, gentlemen. I really appreciate all your wonderful analysis. We keep watching Egypt. One protest too many. Is this really the beginning of the end of the government? Bye for now.